Okay, this is a short video about a coal frame. Uh, this is my square foot garden right now. It consists of four different blocks. Each block is four feet by four foot. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that I covered most of the of each block. I'm going to try it on one block first. Uh, most of the four foot by four foot block doesn't have to cover it entirely. But I wanted something that I could put out here easily and um, protect the vegetables and, and uh, uh, harden them off when I needed to. So right now it's about April 16th. It's 48 degrees out here right now. Um, tomorrow night in the Boston area we're supposed to get about a half an inch to an inch of snow. So it's perfect timing. Um, the other thing I wanted to do was make sure that when I, I built this it was light enough so I could carry it myself. I didn't need two people. Uh, I wanted to make it out of, of wood because it's the easiest, most readily available material I have. And I wanted it to be easily storable because around here you probably get two, two and a half months of use out of the coal frame. And the other ten months you got to store it. So I wanted to make sure that I could store it flat, either on the ground or in the shed against a wall. And then when I needed it to bring it out, assemble it uh, quickly, put it in the ground, and then uh, put my vegetables in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how the components went together, how I made the components first, each component, the sides, the front, the back, and then uh, we'll go ahead and put it together, see how long it takes me to put it together, and we'll see how well it's going to work. Okay? Okay, we're in the garage because I wanted to get out of the wind. Um, these are the components of the uh, coal frame. So the construction is basically two by fours, you see a 2x4 here, a 2x4 here, and the back uh, is a 2x2. Two two. Now this angle is based on your latitude, so that around at noontime the sun is perpendicular to the, uh, this 2x4 here where the glazing is going to be. Um, let me point out some other features here. There's a bracket down at the bottom, you can see here, and the front board is going to uh, connect to those two bolts you see at the bottom. Um, that's the front of the coal frame. And it goes over here and it'll go to another one, uh, another side panel on this side. Um, that's how that connects. The back is, there's a channel here. And the channel is made out of some aluminum, um, uh, aluminum channel which is from a suspended ceiling just a, a 90 degree angle and then there's a piece of wood right here so that the back is going to be basically these boards that are sandwiched in that channel um, the reason I did this besides the fact that I had I had this wood already uh, and I had this material is that the aluminum gives it a little bit of give um, and these boards that I used here were bond board and they were warped. They were many uh, 10, 15 years old and they were warped. So I had to plane them down so they would fit and uh, I think when water hits them they might swell up a little bit, although hopefully not too much. And, um, and they slide in here. The top is where the front glazing is going to go is a, is a threaded hem nut or threaded insert that's just pounded in there and epoxy so that a quarter 20 um, bolt can go in there and, um, and, and hold the front, the, the front glazing on. Now what I did also was I put in here some rigid styrofoam board and you can see it right over there and all I did there was press fit it. Now if you look at the other side there's one by threes giving it a little bit more rigidity The and, and uh, uh, the end, the sidewall, and if I wanted to, I could put another one by three on this side to hold the uh, styrofoam in place. But I really didn't need it. It was pretty press fit in there. I just cut it, and it it's uh, it's stuck in there. Um, in terms of coating, I used regular uh, linseed oil to coat the wood, give it some preservative. I didn't want to use pressure treated lumber because it was a vegetable garden. Um, I also um, didn't want to use any, uh, you know, copper or any kind of lead-based or even not even lead-based, but uh, oil-based paint. Um, so I just used linseed oil, wiped it, wiped it down on all the surfaces. 
So the way this is going to work is I'm going to bolt the front board with two bolts here. And on the other side, same thing, two bolts. And I'm going to slide the boards for the back in here. And um, then just screw on top the, uh, the, the hinged uh, front, which I'll show you. And hopefully that'll work. Okay, this is the front cover. And what I did was I put a sheet of plastic, and then over that, to protect it, I put some galvanized hardware cloth, screen basically. Uh, I think it's quarter inch. I want to show you the uh, hinge mechanism here. I have three hinges, and they're connected to this uh, one by two and a half, I guess. And uh, this holes right here where the, the uh, screws, the bolts will will uh, plug in and connect to the main to the main housing. So that's kind of it. Uh, I'm going to put this together and we'll see how it works. Okay, here are all the parts on the lawn, ready to be assembled. You can see it it should be able to be stored flat. And I'm going to see how long it takes me to put this thing together. Okay, here we go. Okay, there it is put together. Um, I timed myself and it took me eight minutes to put all the pieces together. Uh, went, to, went together pretty much as I expected. So there are two bolts on either side at the bottom there that I showed you. And then, so that's four bolts. And then I use these uh, speed nuts that they use in, or knob nuts, a quarter 20 that they use in woodworking. Uh, to connect the top. Uh, it was a little more difficult than I expected because of the trellis in back here and, and uh, sliding the, the individual boards uh, down the, uh, down the uh, slide, down the uh, channels. But uh, it wasn't too bad. Uh, now in terms of performance, we'll see how it works. Uh, I'm not convinced that I have the best glazing on here and we'll see how it takes a snow load because it's just a piece of plastic with some uh, quarter inch screening over it because that's what I had. Uh, if it doesn't get warm enough then I can put another chunk of styrofoam against the back wall inside. If it gets too hot then I can take out some of these, this small section at the bottom here, this triangular section right here to cool it off. And I can also take out the other side. It's got a triangular section at the bottom too. Also, I can just prop this up like this to keep it cool uh, when it gets too hot with a brace. But uh, overall, we'll see how it works. We'll see how the snow load looks tomorrow night uh, on it. And I'll put a thermometer in there to try to, try to measure some temperatures. Uh, but that's it. We'll see how it goes and uh, I'll keep you posted. Okay, I want to wrap up this video here. Uh, the other night we had uh, about three inches of snow. That was about two nights ago. And uh, the cover seemed to take it pretty well, even though it's one layer of, uh, of plastic. So uh, I wanted to talk about a little bit about the dimensions and then we'll talk about the performance. Um, I don't think I mentioned that the styrofoam is one inch thick tongue and groove styrofoam. Um, again, as I mentioned before, the uh, Actual sides are made out of two by fours. The back is made up of a two by two, which you can see here. And actually, the corners are made up of two by twos, right, right here. And the back is made up of uh, one by eights. They're roughly seven and a half inches in diameter, and they slide in that slot I talked about. Now, the thing that holds everything together in the back, these uh, nuts are. Um, bolts with uh, knobs on them. Uh, I didn't have anything at the bottom holding it together. If if it turns out that's necessary, I can just put a uh, like a bungee cord to hold the bottom together. But so far it didn't seem like it was really necessary. Um, now let's talk about the temperature. Uh, temperature right now, this is April 19th, is about 51 degrees at 1145. So let's look at what the temperature is inside. 
don't know if you can see that, but that thermometer is showing uh, 90 degrees right on the surface of the, uh, the dirt, the square foot garden. And there's another thermometer here rem remotely, which uh, I measured just before I came out here. And on the side of the um, cold frame, it's about 81 degrees. And the soil temperature is roughly 48 to 50 degrees. So there's three temperatures. Uh, at night, if there's no sun during the day especially, it gets down to pretty close what the ambient air temperature is. Uh, one other thing, the dimensions. This is a four foot by four foot square foot garden. So the dimension across, it's four feet wide this way. It's about three feet wide uh, in this direction, the depth. And the height, I don't know what the height is. It's depending on what the angle is, your height will be different. So that's about it. Uh, I'm going to begin using this now, uh, see how it works. And uh, if there are any changes, I'll post another uh, updated video. If you like this video, please uh, hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you.